Welcome back to the Citizen Channel. You're all staying safe and well. And our match preview of Leeds United against Manchester City, Ellen Road. Yes, one of the old grounds. I like the old grounds. I can't. I'm not getting there myself, but uh, it's a place sort of. Even though it was a bit rocky sometimes when we went there, many times in the seventies and eighties, etc. Um, I always enjoyed going there. It was always a bit scary, a bit nervy, but uh, yeah, I always enjoyed. It. I'm, not, I'm not talking about football. I'm talking about just getting in and out the ground <laughs> so just something about Ellen Road I just I just always liked going even though it was always a little bit iffy and the, the more of you the, the better but it was never easy never easy place to go so well uh, hopefully be getting down there uh, get, get in and out get back safe that'll be fantastic right yeah Ellen Road 30th of April 2022 a 5.30 p.m. kickoff. Yeah, one of those grounds as well. We've not got a great record, guys, but it'll crop up from time to time as we go through this preview. Uh, match day 34, of course, so we're into the last five games now. Five, five wins, we win the lead, don't we? Uh, it's easy to say it. It's the challenge to do it, isn't it? We'll be having a look at Leeds, who unfortunately have improved recently. That's typical, isn't it? And of course, uh, although Liverpool are playing Newcastle, aren't they? I think Newcastle have improved as well, haven't they? So you never know. We might, we might both, we might both struggle. Of course, I'll be trying to predict our eleven, which is pretty hard. I have no idea with obviously a, a big game in the Bernabeu coming up as well. I've done in eleven, but I, if I can get seven or eight of them right, I'll be quite happy. The match is on Sky Sports, so you can watch it on Sky Sports if you're not going down there. In charge, unfortunately, we've got Mr. Paul Turney uh, in charge. The referee is assistant uh, Constantine Hatzidikis and Neil Davis. Fourth official, Robert Jones. VAR, we've got Darren England on VAR, making the coffee, brewing the tea or getting the penguins or getting the chippy chippy tea for him is uh, Gary Besick. So that's, in, in other words, his assistant VAR, which I don't honestly know what they do. So perhaps he draws the lines. I'm not too sure. Previous meetings, yeah, well, last time out, a very wet Ellen Road. I mean, obviously, we'll I'll talk about the last game at Ellen Road, not particularly our 7-0 thrashing of them at the Etihad early in the season, but a very wet Etel Ellen Road on the 3rd of October 2020, COVID time, of course. Uh, a team, yeah, a team that day, Edison, Walker, Diaz, Laporte, Mendy, Rodri, Mendy, De Bruyne, Foden, Mara, Sterling and Torres. A 1-1 draw, yeah, taken. And this was taken from my little match report vlog. I've had a quick look back. It was my summing up. Leeds grew in confidence, I said. And from 20 minutes to this, about the 75th, 76th minute, were arguably the better team. And fully deserved at least the draw. At times, they made City look totally average. I hope they don't do that this time. Overall record at their place. Um, yeah, we've won 15. Drawn nine, but lost 29. Yeah, it's not one of the greatest grounds, uh, guys. Not too bad, but, you know, when you lose more than you've won or drawn, it's never a good place to go. Please check out my little History Boys feature, uh, which goes back to the April the 10th, 1991, with Leeds in fourth place and City in sixth as we visit Ellen Road. So enjoy doing those History Boys features. So please check that out. The links will be below and be popping up on screen as well. Odds to win the match, please. I don't condone gambling when the fun stops. Stop. Uh, yeah, City. Uh, you can get one to two on City to win the league at the moment with Sky. You know, generally four to nine, so we're still the favourites. Let's see what happens after this game, and the match itself. City are three to ten on, which are not not the not the worst odds we've been. So three to ten on a draw. You can get the highest. You can get eleven to two with Bet three six five. It's generally about five to one, and if you fancy Leeds, you can get ten to one with Coral. Interesting again, uh, eight and nine to one at various other bookmakers. But if you fancy me a Leeds fan, you fancy that, and please check out my little special odd show as well. And last week, obviously, against Real Madrid, another another couple of wins, two bets, two wins again for the second second game on the trot. So that's uh, all good stuff. More money for the uh, nominated charity, charity, which is the Christie, of course. Right, how will this pan out? What's going to happen? Yeah, I mean, Leeds, obviously, an interesting season. If, if perhaps a poor season compared to the standards he set last season. Obviously, obviously they lost Bielsa, didn't they? Got Mr Marsh in. Uh, but they could, obviously, they're still in a position where they can guarantee that, obviously, it's in their own hands, which some of the other teams can't say that. Well, some of the other teams, there's not many teams can affect Leeds at the moment. So they can guarantee the Premier League status. 
And of course, if they can, they will aim to remain on track next season to try and establish themselves. It's very important, uh, ground improvements, building new ground, increased capacity, stuff like that. It's very important that a team like Leeds does stay in the Premier League and actually improve itself as well. But they do have work to do to remain safe. The fifth bottom at the moment, as I'm recording this, Burnley are three points behind, but they played the same game, so Leeds have got a three-point advantage. Everton are five points behind, but they've got one game in hand on uh, Leeds United. So, again, as I say, it's all in Leeds' own hands. And as I said before, as we started this thing, they're in a good run of form. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, they and Burnley are doing OK. It's Everton that are probably struggling just at this point in time. Leeds are actually unbeaten in five, the last five games, winning three. But after City, of course, they've got uh, Arsenal away and Chelsea at home. So not easy games. And Jesse Marsh, the manager, will no doubt he'll be aiming to get at least four or five points from those games. I mean, he'll be wanting to get at least a draw out of City, um, you know, which they did obviously manage last season. But he'll try to do that. I say he'll try and get a draw out of City and then a point, a win at either Arsenal away or Chelsea at home, Arsenal away or Chelsea at home. So, yeah, he'll be aiming for. If he gets, if he if he gets sort of one or two, he might be. He still might be struggling depending on how Everton do. Of course, they're, they're the main competitors, and they're still certainly better at the back. Uh, and they're sort of not doing too, not scoring lots of goals up front. They've got James leading the line at the moment, uh, but uh, they have improved uh, vastly. They had uh, sixteen days off before the recent game against Crystal Palace, so Jesse Marsh was working on certain things with the squad. Uh, the Crystal Palace game wasn't the greatest game. A nil-nil, it wasn't a thriller, that's for sure. It wasn't a nil-nil thriller. But they are, I say, they are tighter at the back than they were under Bielsa. So I don't think we'll be scoring seven this time. I'll take a one-nil win, a uh, scrappy goal. Uh, but uh, let's hope it's a bit better than that. But, of course, uh, not only did it improve, but they're going to have the Leeds fans behind them as well. So it won't be an empty Ellen Road. It'll be a noisy Ellen Road. And let's face it, Leeds fans are probably amongst the most confident <laughs> confident fans in English football. And they'll, right behind, they'll be right behind their guys. And uh, they'll hope to make the most, of course, of City weaknesses after a, a quite a hard-fought 4-3 win over Real Madrid. And obviously, uh, perhaps a weaker side. Hopefully not, fingers crossed, depending what we've got injury-wise, etc. They do have their own injuries. We've got Patrick Bamford, Adam Forshaw and Tyler Roberts are still all out for Leeds United. But as I said, they are rested. Uh, they were a bit lacklustre against Crystal Palace, but I'm sure that sort of blew the cobwebs off. So they'll be, certainly be up to this. There won't be any tiredness in Leeds legs. Like I think we're, we're sort of... You do sense with City was sort of running, running on that sort of empty, not empty, but was sort of running on some fumes at the moment with some of the players. And another positive for Leeds, of course, and we're going to talk about certain things in the quirky stats. Is uh, we don't have the greatest record there, do we? So they would be confident. They would be confident they can get some out of this. Which uh, you know, we know, we know records, poor records are there to be broken. So what about City in themselves? I mean, obviously, as they Leeds are going to be a tough proposition, but they're not they're not down there near the bottom because they're a very good team. But as I said, Jesse Marsh has uh, has come in, and certainly in the last five games, he, he seems to have turned it around a little bit. So we will have to be wary of of what they've got. And as far as us, of course, we've got a big game to come at the Bernabeu. Uh, Pep would love to rest key players for this. If he, but if he wants to win the league, we can't, can we? He has to simply, if he backs up what he says that the league's more important, the most important thing, then he has to play a strong team. He has to play an energetic team, which makes one or two of my little players a little bit doubtful for the energy. Uh, but uh, as I said, with the Madrid game coming up, I think he'll give one or two players a, a go in this that didn't get a go against Real Madrid in the first leg. And we certainly can't afford to be ponderous. We have to use all our energy to win this game. And if we don't sort of break the deadlock and take a lead early on, Leeds will just gain in confidence. Uh, so we do need that fast start. We can't be waiting to try and nick something in the second half because uh, Leeds can prove they're quite capable of doing something themselves as well. So we will be able to hopefully get an early-ish lead and then start to control the game. Uh, yeah, again, easier said than done. Big question marks over City players remain, of course, and we don't know how long we've lost Stones for now, so that's another major blow for us. 
Uh, but at least Cancelo is back and let's hope he's back to some sort of form because, again, he's not been overly great the last few games he's played. And for me, we have to play our best team. As I said, I, I do, I've sort of put a bit of a pep on it, head on here. I'm sort of not just straight forward going for the best team, I think. I've sort of put a couple of players in that I think Pep might introduce back into this uh, this starting eleven. So here we go. Let, let, let me know what you think, guys. Anyway, what you think of this starting eleven? Edison, Cancelo, surely has come back in at right back. Diaz Laporte. And I did play with using uh, Aki, but I think Zinchek, Sinchenko's in quite a rich vein of form. Why not keep him on and keep him playing in this and, and play him again in Madrid if need be, uh, rather than Aki? As I said, I was going to put Aki in there, but let me know your view. So I have to, I have gone for Sinchenko. Of course, Rodri. Would he play further against Leeds? I doubt it. I doubt it, but you, you don't know. And then the middle, yeah, I did put KDB and Bernardo there, but I actually put Gundogan because I don't know when he's going to play otherwise, uh, and I think he wants him to play. And although it does slow the thing down in the middle, I've put Gundogan next to KDB on the basis that he won't play against Madrid. Um, Pep will just play him for this and, and rest one of the other guys. So I've put Rodri, KDB, Gundogan, and up front again, I've rested Mares. I think Foden should have the legs now. I should should should. He was young enough. Only only six or seven games left to play, and Jesus is on fire. You'd be daft not to play Jesus at the moment. And of course, uh, Bernardo doesn't let us down. So my front three, if you like, uh, Bernardo, Jesus, and Foden. Uh, obviously, with a with a KDB and Gundogan sort of triple triple quadruple whatever pivot that that we can think of if need be. In front of that uh, back back five, if you like, and okay, of course, yeah, Grealish may come into it, and of course, I've accepted that Walker's not going to be fit for this, and then he'd be plump. Would he be pumped straight back into the Madrid Madrid game? Hopefully, he's on the bench for this at least, and he gets a few minutes, and then plays back for the Madrid game in midweek. But uh, we'll have to see, won't we? But as I said, I'm not hundred percent sure on that team. I just hope Pep plays the most positive team, the most energetic team he can play against Leeds United. I think we will need that energy. I think we'll say we say I don't want to be going in at half time nil nil or, or God forbid a goal down or something like that. I, I just want to sort of get a grip of this game and put it to bed uh, as early as we can and control the game. It, it put into put it to bed means we just get a one or two goal margin and keep on top of it then then so be it. We know we're quite capable of doing that but I do want us to sort of go for this. I don't. I don't want this to be nil nil at half time. I will dread that in all fairness. And let me know your thoughts, guys. Anyway, because I say I think it's very important. Of course, we'll know what Liverpool have done because they'll be playing Newcastle early in the day. So we'll know exactly what we have to do. We could be starting this game in second spot. Of course, I mean even even, even if Liverpool get a draw up in Newcastle, we'll still start the game in second spot. So be very interesting to see psychologically and, and if, if say say the things were, did happen say Newcastle did beat Liverpool would, would that change Pep's uh, team selection I mean does he let the players know very early it's be interesting to see won't it but uh, hopefully oh, hopefully anyway hopefully it'll all go well let me know what you think guys of this game I'm, I think we're all worried about them all now aren't we I think I think that's just par for the course it's, it's you know the last five games to play to win the league title of course we're worried but uh, Let's hope Pep's got it sorted. I'm sure he has. Match quirky stats. Yeah, these aren't great. And as I say, stats are stats and they don't mean anything on a, on a game. It's start from scratch, don't we? But some interesting stats or some negative stats here for City, which are, I'm not overly impressed by when you look at City and Leeds uh, re, uh, recently. A lot of it is probably because, of course, while we've sort of risen and risen in the Premiership, Leeds weren't there. So a lot of these stats go back to a little bit further further back in time when we perhaps weren't as good so it looks less impressive but that's because Leeds haven't been around and been able to change stats haven't we over the last few years against teams like Arsenal and uh, United and stuff like that we've been able to change our stats a little bit because we've been a very good team but uh, Leeds we've not had that opportunity because they've been out of the Premiership for so long Right, here we go. Quirky stats before we go. Leeds have lost just two of their last nine home league games against City. There you go. 1-6 drawn one. Doing so in consecutive meetings in December 1995, a 1-0 win for City, and September 2000, a 2-1 win for City. So a long time. City are looking to complete the first league double over Leeds since 81-82, a season that saw Leeds relegated from the top flight. 
City won the reverse fixture 7 0. We did. There are three occasions that City scoring 10 plus goals against an opponent with a single Premier League season Watford in 2019 2012, Norwich in 2011 12 11, and Tottenham in 2013 14 11. So let's match at least the Tottenham one, eh? That'd be good. Leeds are winless in the last six home league games against reigning top flight champions, drawn two, lost four, since beating Arsenal 1 0 in May 99 and effectively costing the gun as the title that season. Another one. Leeds, Leeds, they say they don't get any better, guys. Interesting. Leeds have conceded at least once in each of their, so this is okay, at least once in each of their last nine Premier League home games since a 1 0 win over Crystal Palace in November. Only Watford with 21, what a 20 poor old Watford, are on a longer run without a home clean sheet among current Premier League sides. Leeds are looking to keep three consecutive Premier League clean sheets for the first time since August 2002. All right, they've not been in the Premier League that much, have they? Uh, the third game of which was back then, back then was a 3 0 home win against Manchester City. <laughs> Dodgy. After a run of seven defeats and one draw in eight Premier League games, Leeds are now unbeaten in their last five, as stated. They last went six without defeat in April 2021. A run which included a victory over, yes, you guessed it, Manchester City. Not good omens, some of these. City remain unbeaten away from home in the Premier League since a 1-0 loss at Tottenham on the opening weekend, of course. one twelve drawn three since. A draw's no good in this one, is it? The citizens have kept a clean sheet in each of their last four on the road. Yes, we've never gone, but, but we've never gone five consecutive away league games without conceding before. So let's hope we can break that little record. That'll be... That'll be good to have. So as you said, as you can see, some some interesting stats there, some some negative stats, as I say. But st- we start from scratch. It's a new game, isn't it? So I'm not going to worry too much about it. But but we'll see. We'll see how it pans out. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed that. Please, I'll tr- with it being a five thirty kickoff, I doubt I'll get the match report out on Saturday evening. It's probably going to be more. Uh, Sunday, Sunday lunchtime because I am working Sunday, Sunday this week I've had to swap a day uh, so it will be more Sunday lunchtime and I'll have the match report and the players ratings from the Manchester Evening News and myself of course and please don't forget to check out my History Boys feature April 1991 at Ellen Road were you there? Re- relive it if you haven't and if you're too young to remember it have a, have a look back and have a, have a see what that's like uh, that's the History Boys and of course the Odd Show when seeing what uh, hopefully fingers crossed what we're going to win for the nominated charity this week. So, hope you enjoyed that, guys. Thanks for joining me. Let me know in your comment. Any comments on Leeds or if you, thought, if you visited the ones the last time you visited? Okay. The last time I went to a game. Oh, God. That's, uh, a long time ago. Yeah, a long time ago. I can't remember now. I'd have to, I'd have, to have a think back. It wasn't the 90, I wasn't at the 1991 one that uh, I did the History Boys feature on. It would would have probably been in the eighties. I've not. I don't think I've been since the eighties to Ellen Road. So let me know. Let me know what it's like now. Let me <laughs> please, because I say it's been a long time, but it was hard work. Uh, is it still hard work now? Pro- possibly. Who knows? Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I only ask one thing: don't until we meet again. Please stay safe, Blues. Come on, City. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. <laughs>